Allow me to introduce you to America's new Whipsaw M5 robotic combat vehicle. It's absolutely terrifying and awe-inspiring. I'd buy that for a dollar. It's the world's first fully electric tank and fully autonomous super tank. It weighs only 10 and a half tons, or three times less than a Bradley, while still delivering the same firepower. You might have already seen them in giant blockbusters like Fast and Furious 8, Mad Max Fury Road, and G.I. Joe. This YouTube video description from the developers How and How state that it's deadly yet silent, while housing a massive 30 millimeter auto cannon. That's because its electric motor produces almost no noise and reduces its thermal signature. I think it's the world's first electric track tank. It's been reported that you can't hear the vehicle until it's 100 meters away, while you can hear an Abrams on pavement from over 1,000 meters away. Imagine a ripsaw sneaking up on you in the field, and the last thing you see and hear is its cold robotic voice as it says, You have 20 seconds to comply. The M5 robotic combat vehicle has all your favorite buzzwords, including modular design. We were just discussing designs for the Army's killer robot. Put modularity in it and make it lame. So you can swap out autocannons for missiles or anti-air weapons that can be launched from out of line of fire. But will this system be a major part of the US Army's future doctrine, or is it not really all that it's hyped up to be? It's likely that many of you out there are planning to pop the big question. And I know firsthand about the do's and don'ts when proposing to the woman of your dreams. I proposed just a few weeks ago to my lovely fiance, Caitlin, and she actually said yes. This video's sponsor, jamesallen.com, knows each love story is unique. So they make it easy to design custom engagement rings to match the lifelong partnerships they're commemorating. jamesallen.com's store is completely online, which not only saves you up to 50% compared to traditional retailers, it also gives you up close 360 degree view of your diamond, along with real-time diamond consultants who can walk you through the process, answer technical questions, and even give out some fun advice on how to pop the question. They offer over 200,000 certified conflict-free diamonds, hundreds of ring settings in metals like platinum and rose gold, and everything comes with free resizing, engraving, and lifetime warranty. So if you're planning to pop the big question, customize your engagement ring or jewelry piece today with James Allen and get 25% off by clicking the link in the description or the pinned comment below. How and How Technologies is run by identical twin brothers. They originally designed the robot tank as a project in their backyard garage way back in early 2000s. They've been inventors their whole life since they were seven years old building log cabins with each other in Maine. It wasn't until they entered into a DARPA challenge in 2005 that it got the attention of the US military. Their sweet promo video shows the ripsaw ripping some sweet snow donuts. This thing flies at a top speed of 60 miles per hour. Other variants can reach that speed in just three seconds. Apparently, it could have hit 100 miles per hour, but remotely operating at that speed was a recipe for disaster. It was Brigadier General Jeffrey Norman, director of the Next Generation Combat Vehicle Cross-Functional Team, who said, quote, human-machine integrated teams are the future of successful ground combat in the land domain. And this gives us a hint as to the Army's future plans here. And it also aligns with what we see the Air Force doing with their Next Generation fighter jet. They want these M5 robot tanks to be like loyal wingmen to the new M10 Booker, the Abrams, and the Bradley. The strategy calls for these to be sent out first ahead of human troops to do all the dangerous reconnaissance and scouting. This is how the US military plans to offset the fact that they might be outnumbered numerically in future wars. Recent conflicts have taught us just how vulnerable large combat platforms like tanks can be on the modern battlefield. This is why the US military is trying to become more dispersed. Why lose a trained crew to an unguided missile when they can just respawn into a new remote control M5 ripsaw and keep punching into enemy controlled territory? How exactly was the ripsaw designed though? Progress has quickly been made, especially in aerial UAV systems. But you might have noticed the same hasn't really been true for ground-based drones. And I want to know, why is that? Partly because there's a lot less to worry about crashing into when you're flying in the sky than driving on the ground. In August 2023, the Robotic Combat Vehicle Program of the U.S. Army officially started the next stage of the game. It's like an episode of a reality competition show. Welcome back to Military Procurement Challenge, the show where four companies have agreed to spend the next 365 days competing with each other to build a robot tank for the U.S. Army. 
But there's a twist. They're also competing to find true love. The prize is to win a $24 million defense contract and a happily ever after. Beat your contestants, MCQ Inc. from Fredericksburg, VA. We're a small, agile business that manufactures our own products. We're not here to make friends, we're here to kick butt. <laughs> General Dynamics Land Systems from Sterling Heights, Michigan. We've got this in the bag. We already built the Striker and Ajax IFV. We're also hoping we'll meet the love of our lives here. Next up is Oshkosh Defense LLC from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Let's be straightforward here. We're a tactical vehicle manufacturer since 1917. We've made over 190,000 tactical vehicles in over 20 different countries, and we're gonna win this competition and walk out of here with our soulmate. And finally, Textron Systems Corp in Hunt Valley, Maryland. We're producing the M5 Ripsaw robot tank now, and if anyone gets in our way, we're not afraid to play a little dirty. <laughs> what? It's perfect. It's so fuck stupid. All this and more on Military Procurement Challenge. The qualifying stage started around 2019 with the drafting of the Army's robotic combat vehicle campaign plan, which laid the expectations for new unmanned vehicles. That same year, Specialist units received small multi-purpose equipment transports that entered testing. These transports are basically small golf carts that carry a thousand pounds of supplies and gear while trotting along with foot soldiers. I've been on 25 mile ruck marches and I can confirm it'd be nice to be able to toss your ammo pack onto a robot. But the problem was they're not able to get over a lot of rough terrain. That's where the Ripsaw excels, thanks to its high power to weight ratio. It's designed to use a kind of spring-loaded wheel. It's got low ground pressure and an extremely low center of gravity, just 70 centimeters high. This basically, as a result, means that it's very stable and maneuverable. It's like sending your RC car all around the backyard. It flips over and then it keeps going. It can climb vertical obstacles as high as a meter and a half. And there's an amphibious version. So I just realized I actually interviewed one of the General Dynamics executives at AUSA in Washington, D.C. about two years ago about their robot combat vehicle prototype. And I've been waiting for the right opportunity to share this footage with you guys ever since then. Hi, my name is Tim Reese. I'm the Director of Business Development for U.S. Operations at GDLS. Hey, Chris, this is our track robot 10-ton, or T-Rex as we call it. This is our medium weight robotic combat vehicle candidate. So this particular one behind me here is the five ton chassis with a payload of air environment loitering munitions. So this has got 22 switchblade 600 munitions on it and 24 switchblade 300 munitions. And these are drones that a commander can launch out in front of the unit, loiter around the battlefield until it identifies a target or until the commander identifies a target and then it would go after that target. The larger switchblade 600 that launches out of these tubes on the back has a warhead that can defeat an armored vehicle and the smaller switchblades that launch off the front end of the vehicle, you can't quite see from this angle or anti-personnel warhead. But our, our point with this chassis is that we can put kind of any payload on here. This is uh, drones. We've had engineering equipment on here. We've had resupply cargo containers on here. We can do high-powered microwaves. And then we just got back from Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri in September, where we did an obstacle breaching experiment with them. We had a different package on here, obviously, with a, a, a dozer blade and a backhoe and a Miklik line charge launcher. I also got to see the Ripsaw firsthand at AUSA, and the first thing that surprised me was how low profile it was. This thing really hugs the ground. The other thing that obviously sticks out to me here, it's got a very different payload than the General Dynamics one. They've got a 50 cal on there and what looks like maybe some countermeasure smoke grenades in the back there. But it'll be interesting to see who the Army decides to go with. The more I think about it, the more this thing is terrifying and can sneak anywhere. Enter the Ripsaw family of robots. Oh God, that's weird to say. The family of robots. Robot family. These robot units combine the ground vehicle's expertise of how and how technologies with Teledyne's FLIR thermal systems. It was only as recently as 2021 that the U.S. Army conducted the first live fire testing to evaluate the integration of the Protector RT-40 turrets. This is a crazy firepower of 30 millimeter XM-813 automatic cannon, along with a coaxially mounted 7.62 M240 machine gun. This is a relatively large turret compared to the rest of the M5. And it's the same turret that the Army originally installed in the Stryker Dragoon IFV. It's going to be effective against many armored vehicles like your Russian BMPs. We've even recently seen a Russian T-90 tank get KO'd by autocannon rounds. Of course, 
It's gonna handle a lot of your typical soft targets as well, including trucks and infantry, but if you need to kill tanks specifically, the M5 can also be equipped with a Javelin missile launcher. Something no one seems to mention though is that with this bad boy, you could also strap a naval strike missile onto it and ride it all around the islands near the South China Sea. That's the whole concept here, is you'll be able to distribute and spread out more using these kind of robot systems. The cost appears to be between $200,000 and $750,000, depending on which version of the Ripsaw. And if you have that kind of money lying around right now, there's even civilian versions sans the missile launchers that you can purchase. It takes anywhere between six months to build, and it sounds like it's a lot cheaper than the $5 million strikers. I dug this old US Army PowerPoint up on the Ripsaw. It's filled with buzzwords, never seen so much acronym soup in my entire life that I was swimming through, but worry not, I've dug through and translated it so no one has to wade through the corporate speak. From what I can tell, this platform requires a command and control vehicle to help relay wireless signal. One of the things that appears to be a closely guarded secret at this point that no one really mentions in the open source info, how far away can you operate from the command unit? How good is the Wi-Fi signal? When you fly a drone, for example, you can only get a reliable signal for a certain distance. What is the bandwidth on this bad boy? That's something I would be very curious about if my unit was handed a few of these. Also, my platoon would be called to go recover this thing if it ever loses signal 500 meters away. My guess is it's definitely going to count as a sensitive item, so I'm not sure I would want this multi-million dollar thing assigned to me to be accountable for. What we do know is there's about eight patents pending on the Ripsaw in the United States as of 2009, so that's old outdated information. I couldn't find more up-to-date information except for this patent document suggesting that the patent might have went through in 2010. Basically, what's innovative here, according to the patent, is that it glides over rough terrain thanks to shock absorbers. Now, according to Pop Psy article written by Bjorn Carey, when the suspension compresses, it creates slack that could cause a track to come off, typically with tanks, potentially flipping the vehicle. So the inventors devised a spring-loaded wheel at the front that extends to keep the tracks taut. The ripsaw has never thrown a track. End quote. So they solved a major problem with the tank's tracks. The Howe brothers actually hand-shaped steel cleats and redesigned the mechanism for connecting them in a track. So usually tracked vehicles use a pin and bushing system to connect treads. The Ripsaw, at least back in 2010, used a two pound cleat instead which weighs about 90% less than similar scaled tank cleats. There are two main differences between designing a manned tank and an unmanned robotic tank for the battlefield. The first main difference has to do with crew compartments. If you remove the manned part, all physical characteristics such as the silhouette, size, weight, distribution, payload capacity, armor, and armor placement will be affected by that difference. In traditional tanks, the design needs to accommodate a crew usually consisting of a commander, gunner, loader, and driver, the interior layout must provide sufficient space for each crew member to comfortably be during each extended mission. Additionally, there must be provisions for communication and coordination along with the crew members. Here, ergonomic considerations are fundamental when you want this metal box to be comfy. In contrast, an unmanned tank doesn't require any crew compartments or human operators. Therefore, design can prioritize the optimal placement of sensors, artificial intelligence hardware, and other components. This allows for a more flexible internal layout potentially reducing the overall size of the vehicle and enabling the integration of additional systems. You also don't have to put tons and tons of armor on it. Instead, ergonomics, modularity, and scalability are the fundamental design concepts to consider when making a robot tank. You don't need all that armor for your robot drone as much because if it gets knocked out, you're not losing years worth of valuable trained soldiers. That saves you tons of weight. The second main difference has to do with remote control and autonomous systems which is normally simply done by human operators. In unmanned tanks, they require more advanced systems. And it doesn't mean that they can cut out the person. In fact, robot combat vehicles will use two human operators plus a sergeant coordinating each pair of robots. And what this means is getting a 5G uninterrupted Wi-Fi signal in the middle of a battlefield becomes incredibly important and you have to make sure it's encrypted. This is part of the reason why we've seen the Pentagon has invested billions of dollars into 5G wireless network infrastructure. The M5 is the fifth generation of Ripsaw. Its manufacturers have said that the M5 is the first of its kind thanks to its unique ability to be truly scalable. This is because of its open architecture and its coding and the flat deck, which enables integration with different kinds of payloads, makes it highly modular. 
Modular might be one of the most overused buzzwords ever in the defense industry, but it really fits here. There are even tiny 4.5 ton versions of the Ripsaw. This thing has every kind of capability and configuration imaginable. Army LEGO fans will be thrilled because this vehicle follows the same exact philosophy. The exoskeleton of the M5 tank is a rigidly welded tubular structure. What that means is it's basically like a bike frame and, and it's just those tubes welded together at angles. This skeleton design keeps the weight low. This is really similar to how NASCAR vehicles are designed because it provides 50% more strength at half the weight according to this PopSci article and according to the patent. One of the versions has a max gross weight of 8,500 pounds and can carry payloads weighing up to 6,000 pounds. Simply put, the M5 can use the same chassis and suspension components to scale it up or down according to the mission. It has a mine clearing line and mine plower and IED defeat roller attached. There's even versions that do seat two human operators inside of it. And it uses this proprietary system that reduces, it's called a free floating cabin, where it, you don't even feel the shock of the tank going along the road. The Ripsaw M5 has really exciting or scary surveillance capabilities depending on how you feel about robot tanks. It integrates a daytime video camera, thermal camera, and laser rangefinder. Its surveillance capabilities are enhanced thanks to a FLIR 360 perception technology, whose gimbal helps capture multi-axis movement using high-definition zoom lenses. The Teledyne FLIR technology also includes a more advanced spectral surveillance system. These system sensors will work with fog, sun glares, and low visibility conditions. Although that is a vulnerability of the system because if that camera gets knocked out, you're basically blind at that point. Also, this mini tank is an awesome mothership for not one, but two drones. That's right, this is a robot drone that shoots out drones. Bit of a hat on a hat, but that's okay. The first drone is the R-80D Sky Raider quadcopter. Pops out of a compartment in the back, and can carry payloads of 4.4 pounds, flies at up to 31 miles an hour, and can remain airborne for up to 50 minutes. The second drone is the marsupial unmanned ground vehicle with a 1,000 meter range, which can climb stairs, including a surveillance turret or a retractable platform, and has robotic arm for manipulating objects. Not a bad toy when scouting inside buildings. The M5 light version has a maximum gross weight of about four tons and can carry payloads of approximately 3,000 pounds or a ton and a half. The medium-sized version, which is the one that won the Army's contest, it measures about 234 inches by 105 inches, weighs about 10.5 tons evenly distributed, and has that payload capacity of 8,000 pounds. Size and weight are advantages of the Ripsaw M5 compared to traditional tanks when ensuring rapid deployment. While the massive modern battle tanks move at a slower pace, this baby is a single load air recoverable gem. It goes about 25 miles per hour faster than your M1 Abrams, I believe. It might not be ideal for some missions, but it will be a game changer for others, I think. And that's the whole point of adding robot tanks to your arsenal. So what about the limitations and concerns? They are, after all, in the infant stage of their technology, and as such, they're far from perfect. First, there's the issue of vulnerability to electronic warfare. Robots can be hacked, jammed, and this includes tanks. An unmanned electronic tank can become useless when hacked, which raises the need for backup control vehicles. Cyber attacks have left the realm of bad 80s and 90s movies and become a thing of everyday life. Ukrainian soldiers have hijacked Russian drones to locate and blow up enemy bases. Second, there's the battery of life issue. There's a universal agreement that robots need better batteries. You can't have your robot tank deployed, use it for a couple of hours, and then see it grind to a halt in the middle of the battlefield. However, despite worldwide efforts, there's no clear, definitive solution to this problem. For example, the M5 takes almost the same amount of time to charge as a Tesla vehicle, but also has the same issue with charge velocity and accessibility to charging stations. This is why the team has advocated for a hybrid electric engine, at least for the time being, instead of a fully electric one. But that's not the only problem. Humans are still better at navigating around obstacles and interpreting the surrounding environment. So you're not probably gonna replace your average infantryman with this type of thing just yet. And that's important not just for combat, but also for maintenance in the field. Things like better obstacle detection sensors and improving the AI can help, but there's a long way to go. However, some other challenges are tangentially related to versatility, in particular the maintenance of the M5. This was one of the main concerns of the Army, and there are also ethical concerns about using robots in warfare. There's questions on rules of engagement, accountability, and adherence to international laws on the matter. That's why the US Army wants to keep human beings in the equation, and only humans will decide whether to pull the trigger or not. 
But as these systems improve and artificial intelligence becomes faster at picking out and engaging targets, at what point will computers be given the fire controls in order to outcompete enemy computers? All of this means that the robot combat vehicle in light, medium, and heavy variants are not yet ready to be deployed, not to a combat zone, no matter how much the different contractors' web pages say they are. We will see the final prototypes in 2024 and we'll know the winner's name in 2025. And if everything goes according to plan, the US Army will have its first field ready unit by 2028. Thank you for watching. Please slap the like and subscribe button to send this report to more people. Follow me at Cappy Army on Instagram for more updates. And until next time, I'm your average infantryman signing off.